So we ended last time with this argument that there's a strange attractor. We haven't yet ruled out the possibility of periodic orbits that are just a very long period, but we will get to that. I wanted to back up a little bit and look at the bifurcation diagram for the Lorenz system because it's interesting. The Lorenz system, remember that it had parameters, sigma and B, which we basically fix at 10 and eight thirds. And then R is the parameter that is varied. We found that for R less than one, trajectories just sort of go into the origin. And it's not hard to find an online Lorenz system simulator. So I found one. Here they use a row instead of R and you could adjust what this row is. And if we were to start an initial condition, it's, you know, it's super zoomed in. So let's stop. Maybe it'll start somewhere else. But you see, even for row or R equal to one, it's starting with random initial conditions and they're all just going towards the origin. And if we go greater than one, five, then what? It's showing the three points out of the origin, the two other fixed points show up, which Lorenz called C plus and C minus. It looks like it's just going to one or the other. So let's start with another initial condition. It's almost like it gets its orders from that origin, which is an unstable point for this value. Yep. Okay. That time it went to the left side one. We're looking at the XZ projection. That's the main one that Lorenz looked at. Let's kind of zoom in on here. So you get the idea. Wherever it starts, it's going to end up at one or the other of those two fixed points. Go to another value. I don't know, 10. Mm, we'll do the same thing. Yeah, it's just sort of making larger excursions, but then still spiraling in about like 15. Okay, now I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. I guess we could let that go and see what happens. It shows the time up above these non-dimensional units. It is doing something weird. This is just a different initial condition. It was like looping around one of them and then it's looping around the other. Looks like we already have some kind of chaos going on. Now there is something interesting that happens that happened between R equals 10 and R equals 15. There was a global bifurcation that happened and we may have mentioned it a little bit last time. If we were to look at the bifurcation diagram and I'm going to use a paper, it's a group that's very good at doing numerics for systems like this and trying to explain it. And they did a bifurcation diagram in a paper in 2015. They use rho, but of course it's the same as what we've called R. What they call P plus is what we've been calling C plus, C minus. This is showing as a function of R, what's the, just giving the X position of fixed points and also periodic orbits. So this point P, that's the main pitchfork, P for pitchfork bifurcation, right? That's when the origin goes from being stable, in fact, globally stable, to unstable. And you've got these two branches of fixed points that show up, C plus and C minus, at this value of the hop bifurcation, which was 24 point something. There's a subcritical hop bifurcation. So these branches that show up, around each of the points are unstable. But if you follow them backward, at some point, those two branches will actually intersect. These unstable limit cycles will intersect at what's called a homoclinic bifurcation at about 13.926. So near the origin, you could say there are two stable directions. They locally span a plane. So they span some disk. This is a, a local plane where everything on that is going towards the origin. But of course, there are two directions coming out. Well, there's a positive direction and then a negative. Those are leaving. And in the terminology of manifolds, this would be the two-dimensional stable manifold. And then this other thing is the one-dimensional unstable manifold. And we're just showing it locally. These are directions that if you follow them further, they will curve and stuff and maybe do something interesting. And they do do something interesting. This 2D stable manifold is sometimes called the Lorenz manifold. It's different from the Lorenz attractor, 2D stable manifold of the origin. But let's look at what happens kind of locally in this, in the phase space 
for these values. This shows some pictures for different values. This is for R less than the homoclinic bifurcation. This is R equals the homoclinic bifurcation. And this is R greater than. What's drawn is ESO. That's sort of the local plane of the stable manifold. Everything in there, if we were to draw it, is, is going towards, if you're starting on that plane, you'll be going in towards the origin. But then if you're not on that plane, you're actually going to be dominated by these unstable directions that are moving away. So the unstable directions, if we were to draw local little arrows, just looking at this upper figure, if you start near the origin, it's very unlikely you'll be exactly on that two-dimensional stable manifold. So you will be moving away either on that red branch or the orange branch towards either C, right in there is C plus, and over here, C minus. So it's spiraling in. These manifolds are spiraling into those two stable points. R equals R homoclinic. From the picture, you could hopefully see what is happening. What, what, what do we mean that it's, it's homoclinic? It means that these, the unstable manifold, it'll be kind of looping around C plus, keeping with the terminology we've had. And then it actually comes back. So instead of making a, instead of spiraling into the fixed point, it's, it's making a large enough excursion that it actually just happens to come back and hit the origin again. So we have two homoclinic loops. Right, because of the symmetry of the system, we've got these two. The view here is a little bit oblique, so they don't look exactly symmetric. But you see what's happening. It's going out. They're both coming back. Both branches of the unstable manifold of the origin return. And this is asymptotically to the origin. What this really means is in this region, it's maybe hard to see, but both the orange curve and the red curve are along that blue disk. They're actually in the stable manifold. So there's an intersection of the stable and unstable manifolds. This is called ES because it's giving a local planar approximation. You write W to represent the actual curved thing. We haven't looked at the curved thing yet. For R greater than R homoclinic, if we were thinking from R Hoff bifurcation going backwards, that's when we have these limit cycles, unstable limit cycles. So here they've labeled the unstable limit cycles with different, uh, you know, here's, they call it gamma plus going around C plus and gamma minus going around C minus. So those are unstable, the unstable limit cycles that we were talking about. And then you could also see what's happened to the unstable manifold, the two branches from the, the origin. This thing goes out and then instead of coming back, right, it's going out and then it's kind of looping around and spiraling around the other point. So past that homoclinic bifurcation, you've got a lot of interesting things going on. This is R less than the Hopf bifurcation because we still have those unstable limit cycles. You could also, and this is what's kind of interesting about this group is they'll, they'll follow this stable manifold and look at its global structure. And it does this sort of twisting, crazy thing. And they show it in some videos. So I think this is for below. What we're looking at is we're rotating this large sphere surrounding the origin before that homoclinic bifurcation. And what's being drawn, this kind of giant surface, is the stable manifold of the origin. So it twists and it gets kind of crazy. And then you can see in there, they've kind of cut through so you could see um, the inside. If you look on the right, Right, the, the green dot is the origin, and we've got this sort of curving structure of the stable manifold of the origin, which extends out as far as you want to in space. They just sort of follow it out to this very large sphere. After that homoclinic bifurcation, the stable manifold of the origin hasn't seemed to change much, but you can see all this structure of the, the stable manifold of the origin. And it's kind of tricky to do this numerically. It's a lot of uh, computational geometry, but it, uh, it has inspired people. One of the co-authors is actually good at knitting. And so she, she knit, like this is a knit thing. <laughs> she had some way of knowing once you hang it, how would the folds 
go, but it's showing a crocheted stable manifold of the origin as art. It's really cool, right? And then um, here's another you know, piece of the manifold made as a stainless steel sculpture. There's also a sculpture of the Lorenz attractor for a different value of the parameter. Going back up to this bifurcation diagram, right, we were looking in this regime, regime three, that's what this regime is, between the homoclinic and the hop bifurcation. And there's a behavior called transient chaos that occurs. I think we saw even in a video. So in this regime, we could say it's transient chaos. So this would modify the earlier definition of chaos. We mean chaos that's not long-term. It doesn't go forever. You see chaotic behavior, but then things eventually will settle down. That's interesting. It'll seem to be tracing out that attractor shape, but eventually it'll stay on either the right side and spiral towards C plus or go to the left side and spiral towards C minus. There's a transient chaos regime. And if you were to look at what a uh, typical trajectory might look like in that regime, so starting here, just some in initial condition, it's seeming to go back and forth, but eventually it's going to settle down, spiral into C plus, if we were to follow this forward. Right? There's the origin. And then you know, over here, symmetrically C minus. Different in initial conditions will end up spiraling into C minus. So it's called transient chaos. If you were to look at what an initial condition does, this particular in initial condition, in fact, this is what you'll see. If you look at the Y coordinate, it's seeming to settle down. It's going to settle down on C plus after what looks like transient chaos. So it fulfills all those requirements that we said for chaos. It's sensitive dependence on initial conditions. It is aperiodic. It is not long-term. It, it doesn't go on forever will settle down. It's sometimes been called metastable chaos or people who think in terms of fluids, pre-turbulence. If you have a fluid, it's seeming to do something that's not going to be predictable, but then it sort of settles into maybe a predictable laminar flow. In fact, one of the interesting new areas where people are applying ideas from nonlinear dynamics is to fluid systems and to try to understand turbulence and how can you trigger turbulence how can you suppress turbulence? How can you control turbulence? There's some groups actively doing experiments on that. Georgia Tech is a group that comes to mind, but there's lots of interesting stuff there. So this is the transient chaotic regime. If you wanna see an example, we could go in here. We can have it another random one, there we go. Oh. The origin seems significant, at least the manifold related to the origin, because it's almost like it gives orders. Things go to the origin and then decide, kind of seem to approach the origin. And then it's like they decide they're going to go left or right. And it's not that they're really deciding. In some sense, it depends on what side of the stable manifold of the origin are they. Because this manifold thing is a surface that cannot be crossed. So you're always on one side or the other, but because it's so twisty, it's hard to tell. If you're still looking at this, yeah, this one hasn't settled down yet, but it will. It's in the regime where it will. So this is the transient chaotic regime. It looks like it's settling down to a strange attractor, but it's not. It will eventually settle. The only, remember the definition of the attractors from last time, the only attractors are in this regime, C minus C plus. What do I mean by long-term? This thing is spending a lot of time doing this chaotic motion. In fact, for all I know, it could spend an arbitrarily long amount of time. I don't know. So that's the transient chaos regime. If we were to go back up and look at this bifurcation diagram. So after transient chaos, there's actually this little regime for this small window of R. It's an R between the Hopf bifurcation, 24.74 but greater than about 24.06, there are two attractors. So in this window of parameter space, there are two coexisting attractors. Right before that, in the transient chaos, it's just C minus or C plus. In this case, we have a strange attractor and C plus and C minus fixed points. So things could settle down to one or the other, depending on the 
initial condition. It's sort of like in fluid flows when they mysteriously become turbulent, even though the basic laminar flow is kind of there and linearly stable. You might be wondering, okay, yeah, after that, right, regime five is the one where Lorenz looked, right? He looked exactly at R equals 28. And in this regime, we have just the strange attractor. And I'll say more about it and dynamics on it. What happens if we just crank up R crazy high? Things will settle down to stable limit cycles for sufficiently large R. And this was shown in a paper, I think it's like R greater than about 313. Trajectories will settle down to a stable limit cycle. So if we look at R equals 350, Here's an example of what we're talking about. It seems to be kind of spiraling away from C plus, and then it, it settles down to one periodic thing, which in this projection seems to intersect. In 3D, it's not. So it's going back and forth periodic cycle. If you look at the time series, this is looking at Y as a function of time. I won't even say that there's any transient chaos here. That, you know, it's, it just, it's settling down to a stable limit cycle. Interestingly, there are also windows in the parameter space where you get periodic behavior alternating with chaos or r less than whatever I, I don't know what you want to call that number and then greater than let's say 28 there are windows windows in the parameter space this will make more sense when we talk about 1d maps which is where we're going to move to but there are windows of periodic behavior surrounded by chaos so roughly what I mean, a schematic picture. Chaos looks like, you know, something like that. Uh, windows of periodic behavior will look like things have settled down to, you know, a, a period three orbit or something. And then there'll be a window. I mean, there'll be a large region of chaos and then maybe a little window of non-chaos. Again, this, maybe this won't make much sense for now, but like the chaos is the when you're on the strange attractor and then you've got these little windows. So the other things are uh, chaos. And then here are you know, windows of periodicity. And then it all goes away. All the chaos goes away at some large enough value. And then it's just sort of stable from there on out. You get limit cycles at about R equals 313. Only periodicity. So that's reminiscent of what we'll see in 1D maps, especially in the logistic map. So we will get to that. Let's return to this study of the dynamics on the Lorenz attractor.